undiagnosed breach. <clears throat> in the olden days, when midwives were doing, were the main birth workers uh, at, at birth, um, they did twins, they did breaches, and they did regular birth. And they had pretty, like, fairly low um, death rates because they knew how to do it. I mean, they knew how to support natural physiological birth with um, these twins and breech deliveries. There still are midwives now who can do that, but they're, they're more the rare exception than the rule. So I do know midwives in various parts of the world who, who still um, do breech and twins. It takes a lot of skill and training to learn how to do that, and a lot of that art and skill has been lost over the years. So, but the big thing with breach is it's a variation of normal. We know from long-term breach studies that it's not as um, a big of a concern as we originally thought. There are some risks associated with breech birth that are not associated with regular um, vertex or head-first presentations. Um, and I mentioned them a little bit where the baby can be just a little bit less um, responsive initially but eventually they do come around with some stimulation so and this has been found with um, obstetricians a particular one in France who has who does um, breach in his clinic there's some interesting footage of that that I've watched where he kind of doesn't worry about the babies very much He's, he just delivers them and they and they come around you know because they they're still attached by the cord that's the key keep the cord the cord is a part of that baby still. When you sever a cord, there's an energy that's severed too. So keep babies connected to their placentas. They've been used to that for a long, long time. It reduces trauma for babies if they don't have their cords cut, especially right away, you know, within the first three hours, the cord. Just leave it. Let the placenta be born attached to the to the baby and then you just wrap that thing up and and put it with the baby because it, if you have to burn it off or cut it eventually you can but it's physiologically better to leave it intact they're finding that more and more so let's talk about the next one which is undiagnosed breach uh, or diagnosed breach if that's your standard practice where you are and you have the skill level to do it um, that would take some time and some mentorship <clears throat> with art uh, with a midwife who has that art or that skill for many years likely and she's probably learned from other people and there's lots and lots and lots of practice so um, leaving birth alone is always I think it's it's is a really good default <laughs> for any complication in some ways even undiagnosed breach um, to, so not being too quick put your hands in there let the baby just hang let the mother pant and breathe until the umbilicus is born and the legs are out you know and then the arms come out one at a time and then we just let the baby hang so the baby's head can get really flexed in there, nice and flexed. And then the baby will, and then the mother can push, you know, the mother's pushing a little bit at that point, maybe. Sometimes breech just come out. The breech births that I've been at, I've been at some breech births. They did not, they were not at all a problem. Never had, well, I haven't had any problems with them. And I've been at several. I, I didn't practice doing breach, but I had a few un, un, unexpected ones. Um, but I think it's important if you have that skill to share it with people and to mentor other midwives too, or other students so that you can um, share the, the knowledge. Um, anything else about breach that I can think of? Um, I 
is trusting the mother too. I've actually been at a breech water birth. It seemed to go fine. I, I'm not saying I would plan that on purpose if I knew it was breech, but I do know midwives who do the breeches in the water and they say it just goes really well because the gravity and the warmth keep the baby from breathing. I mean, the, the warmth and the water, it's just like it's like simulating the womb again. So, and then the baby has a chance to just kind of come in so gradually and gently that they, uh, they do pretty well. So I, I don't know, that's not something that uh, you would probably be doing yet, but just a good skill to have because it could happen. And especially in an, un, uh, an emergency situation where really you don't have a choice, it's good to have some skills. Learn the steps. Make little three by fives for each of these emergencies that I'm talking about. And just put the basic steps, four or five steps, like what do you do first, what do you do second, that kind of thing. And just study those and learn them and keep those in your birth bag, those little cards, so you can review them at the birth. Oh, what do I do for shoulder dystocia? What do I do for undiagnosed breach? What do I do for non-reassuring heart tones? And just You'll get to know it eventually. You won't need those cards anymore. Okay, have a good day. <laughs> so let's keep on with this. And, um, and just remember that it's line upon line, precept on precept, bit by bit, knowledge, wisdom, practice. Just, it's a, it's a process. And you're doing great. All right, bless you. Have a good day.